Tommy, if you're watching, I'm putting in new out-of-bounds plays. I'm going to put some side out-of-bounds in and two new offenses. Because he will watch every tape and know everything we're doing except for that stuff. You won't know that stuff. And the other thing Tom Cream will do is watch the Red and Blue Review because he's going to find out from Daryl what Kentucky's yes, game plan is in the Sweet 16. Welcome to the world headquarters of the Red and Blue Review. I'm the only guy still in Kentucky. Howie is off in Phoenix where the cards are getting ready to take on Michigan State. And Daryl is in his second hometown, which is Catlanta. Absolutely. Sitting in Centennial Park as we speak. The fountains behind me. Anyone who's been here knows about this gorgeous park they have in downtown Atlanta. Strangely enough, my hotel is the Indiana headquarters. So I can not only talk to Cream, maybe I can find out some secrets before game time. Who knows? And if he knows, you'll know, and you'll know all you need to know about these matchups in the lightning round. The lightning round on the Red and Blue Review is brought to you by the Kentucky Office of Highway Safety, who reminds you to click it or tick it. What's hot for the University of Kentucky is... Indiana. You remember Indiana just barely beat Kentucky when they met way back in December, but they did win, so that means coming into this rematch, Indiana should be considered the hot team. I mean, it's funny how now uh, everybody's trying to give Tom billboard action. Oh, they're going to kill him. They're gonna, come on now, this is going to be a war. There's 16 teams left. Every one of them can play, and every one of them are inspired. Every one of them are playing out of desperation. Every team. So if you're still playing now, you're fortunate. And if you get a chance to play in a game, and if you expect that it's going to be easy, you'll get beat. These games are going to be tough, every one of them. Yeah, Kyle is absolutely right, because there's a lot of people that are assuming UK is going to win this rematch big. And the reason they're assuming that is because Indiana needed a buzzer beater at home in front of a crazy home crowd in early December to pull off a miracle. They've gone on to lose eight games. UK has lost only twice. And there's a lot of perception that, well, it, UK will kill them on what is allegedly a neutral court. could be a pro-UK court down in Catlanta. But they're assuming that. That's a big, dangerous assumption to make. This is a sweet... 16 teams are playing out of desperation. You'll hear Cal say that. You'll hear UK players say that. Everybody is desperate. That raises the level one notch at least. What's going to be hot in the matchup between Louisville and Michigan State is the defense. These are two of the best defensive teams in all the nation. Their press is a different kind of press. And so kind of speeds up our reads and trying to be hard to do that. And the zone, if you put six or seven in there, the way they play it, which is a man zone, uh, it, it screws up your reads again. So that part's been harder. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, I think we do some things that are going to give some problems. What's hot for Louisville right now is team defense. They're playing great defense, and they have for most of the season. They hold opponents to a very low shooting percentage, especially from three-point range. They're very fast. They're very handsy. That's going to be a problem for Michigan Howie, uh, thanks for letting us know what's going to be the problem for Michigan State coming into this ball game. Uh, one of the problems that Kentucky uh, will not have to deal with is Cal using anger of the rematch as part of motivation in this game against the IU Hoosiers. I don't ever teach anger because the physiology of that is really close to fear. So if you try to make your team angry and angry and it doesn't go right, it turns to fear within their own bodies. So I don't do that. We're playing, we're worried about us being our best. If that's not good enough, then someone played an outstanding ball game and deserved to win. As long as we're doing what we do and doing our best. How do we get our team to play at their best? I feel I got a terrific team with terrific players. Let's worry about us playing well. Let's not worry about what happened four months ago. It doesn't matter now. We haven't talked about it in any of the meetings. We, we, it's not like, okay, we got another shot at the, it's none of that. It's none of that. It's fascinating to sit in and listen to Calipari talk sometime, go beyond X's and O's. And he's absolutely right. If you come into this game angry about what happened last time, we're going to get them. You expend so much adrenaline, so much energy, and then you look up 10 minutes later and Indiana's still hanging with you. Uh-oh, you've expended a lot of, lot of energy and you've kind of lost your, your reason to go out and fight. you got to somehow put this aside, play it as a game, any other game. More importantly, forget December. This is the game that gets you into the Elite Eight. That's all the motivation you need. What's not hot for the University of Louisville during this tournament run is the city they just evacuated, Portland. Uh, you might remember how he was telling us it was rainy and cold and miserable in Portland. Now Jared Swapshire and the cards are in the warm environment of Phoenix. What's the experience been like in Phoenix so far? Oh, it's been great. Been, uh, enjoying this weather a little bit, hanging out at the hotel. Okay, it's ready to play, really. You don't miss the rain of Portland? And... No, not at all. <laughs> What's not hot for Louisville? Actually, well, here's the thing. They wanted out of Portland so bad that it probably motivated them to beat New Mexico. Uh, all the Pueblo Louisville players were joking and laughing about how much nicer it is here in Phoenix and, uh, and how that was part of their motivation. They had to get out of Portland and get to Phoenix as quickly as possible. So, Phoenix, so Portland, not quite. The buzz for the University of Kentucky is this is no time to try something fancy. Cal says don't look for the cast to try to gum things up with new things. Just go win, baby. It's about how do we play our best. Let's not get too fancy. Let's not get too crazy, you know, let's not, this isn't like the, uh, the trick them time. When you end up trying to trick at this time of the season, you know who you trick? Yourself. You trick yourself. We're established who we are, they're established who they are. They have a good idea how they'll play us. He knows how we're going to play them and 
throw it up and let's see what happens. And the funny thing in, on that is he's absolutely right. You don't trick anybody at this point. And UK doesn't need to trick anybody. Marcus Teague didn't play a lick at Bloomington. So all he has to do is play. Terrence Jones didn't even show up. Anthony Davis had four fouls. The only trick UK needs to pull out is for their best players to show up and play the game. Now, you'll hear a lot of stuff. We already heard at the top of the show, Cal Perry saying, I'm putting in new plays for you, Tommy. Come figure those things out. And there'll be a lot of that at the press conferences at Georgia and before the game. But it, it's all gamesmanship between two very good friends. UK just needs for its best players to show up on Friday night. The fans that were in Phoenix watching the Cardinals shoot around this week got a, an odd sight. They got to see some of the Cardinal players wearing those headgears that they adopted about a month ago to protect them from concussions. It may be new to the folks in Phoenix, but it is old hat, this headwear, for the Cards. You know, what can you do? Uh, you know, my safety is uh, the only way I can play. I'm mean, you know, trying to prevent more from happening. It's the most common joke. One of the open ones. I mean, people like, used to talk about it, but like, it's kind of like normal now. I mean, you know, it really doesn't bother any of us. I mean, you, you can't really joke about having a concussion or anything, so I mean, yeah. The buzz for Louisville is all about the headgear. You know, they came out and, and for their open practice for NCAA here in Phoenix, and three of the guys, Tim Henderson, Elisha Justice, and Peyton Siva, all had headgear on. Uh, it was the first chance that most of us had had a chance to see them in the headgear. They've been wearing it for most of the season to try to prevent further concussions. Uh, but definitely a, a little bit of buzz created by the old headgear here in Phoenix. Well, the f folks from Michigan State should be no stranger to headgear. They love football up there. They probably are comfortable seeing football players or basketball players in football gear. Hey, I want to remind you about the Give Them 10 program we've got going with Special Olympics Kentucky. If you would text on your phone to SOKY uh, at the number 80888, you'll make a $10 donation to support the programs we have for our thousands of athletes across the Commonwealth who compete in Special Olympics Kentucky. Well, Kermit the Frog was famous for saying it ain't easy being green. Louisville's about to find out it's not easy beating green. We'll talk about that after Daryl tells us about the Cat's Balls website. DB? Uh, I do appreciate it, sir. And I know the UK fans were very secretly saying, go ahead, Louisville, take out that green team. I don't think UK track record against Michigan State, they wouldn't be disappointed at all if they went away. But we're here at Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Tons of coverage every single day through the final buzz. We can catch it all at catspaws.com. Have you driven a Ford lately? Well, stop by Allstate Ford and test drive a new Edge or Explorer. Or visit us online at allstatetrucks.com. Allstate Ford, on the Waterson at Poplar Level Road. Buying your next VW from Bach and Volkswagen will be a great experience. No games or gimmicks, competitive prices, and a huge inventory make number one Bachman the place to get your Volkswagen. The all-new 2012 Jetta, an IHS top safety fit, is a great vehicle and fun to drive. Or get the sporty all-new 2012 Volkswagen Beetle. It's back and better than ever. Come to number one Bachman Volkswagen today to get your new Volkswagen before someone else does. Hi, I'm Kevin Renfro, owner of the Becker Law Office. For more than 25 years, my law firm has only represented injured people who need help. If you want an experienced lawyer, call or email me at the Becker Law Office. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or the website. We'll answer your questions and work hard for you. You'll owe us nothing unless we win or settle your case. Serious. Experienced. Results. Call the Becker Law Office for a free evaluation. Just dial threes. <laughs> They'll see you before you see them. Cops are cracking down on drinking and driving. Drive sober or get pulled over. Join the club at Sam Swope Auto Group. When you service a vehicle at any Sam Swope dealership, you automatically become a Service VIP Rewards member. You get member pricing on parts and service, lost key return, and emergency roadside assistance. Plus, you can earn points that qualify you for discounts on your next vehicle purchase, up to $2,500. The best part is becoming a member is free. Become a member today at any Sam Swope dealership. Nobody walks away because everybody saves. The 2012 Bluegrass Golf Tour Card is available now. Play eight great courses for one amazing price. Call 502-964-2121 or go to shop21live.com to get yours now. Hurry, they won't last long. What Makes a Champion is brought to you by the home of the champ, the Ali Center. And today, Jenny Conkey says one of the champ's core values is confidence. Muhammad Ali once said, I've never let anyone talk me out of believing in myself. And he didn't. What Makes a Champion? Confidence. Come learn more at the Ali Center. You know, one of the things that may end up making Kentucky the champion of the NCAA is the unselfish play of the freshman, Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Michael Gilchrist did one of the great things of all time. Michael Gilchrist came up to me prior to the Vandy game and knew... Darius hadn't scored in two games and just played like he was a deer in headlights. He said, Coach, why don't you start Darius? So what are you talking about? Let, let him start. So Darius got going a little bit, 
He wasn't great. He took too many shots, but he played pretty good. But it got him and kick-started him. So for what happened today. Um, and, and i got to give credit to Michael for that. And there's just not that many players that would say, let him start, let me come off the bench, let's get him going. We need Darius in this NCAA tournament. Basically what he said to me. First things first, the funny thing is, I'm sitting in the Centennial Park in Atlanta. Chariots of Fire music is playing at the top of the segment. I see a guy, a shirt and tie and a briefcase, running through the park, perfectly in tune to the music. <laughs> Michael K. Gilchrist is going to go down as one of the fan favorites of all time just for that. I mean, this is a McDonald's All-American who goes to your coach and says, hey, put the other guy in. He's struggling. That's the type of player he is. More importantly, that's the type of person he is. That's why his teammates love him so much. He is due for a huge breakout game. He was big at Indiana the first time. We'll see if he's big against Indiana on Friday night. Stopping Green and backing off Teague. Two of the items you'll hear about right now in our Game Time Storylines. <laughs> You know, this time of the year, you, you, know, you can get by by playing five guys, literally, if they stay out of foul trouble. Um, six and seven, you get in two and a half minute timeouts, you get into a, a 60 minute halftime. I mean, it's like, what in the world? I mean, let's play the games. I mean. Of course, he's being facetious. Halftimes don't really last 60 minutes, it's more like 45. Welcome back to the show as we're talking about our game time storylines. Up top is backing off Teague. Cal says he expects Indiana to employ the same game plan as Iowa State did, which is back off of Marcus Teague and make him try to beat them. What, what Indiana is going to do is they're going to back off of Teague and they're going to back off of Michael Gilchrist. The only issue is it's dangerous because we've all seen those guys have big games. And what you're hoping is, well, let's hope that they're not, not making shots. Um, that's what I would do, think that they would do. Uh, I understand that logic, but really, this close to Iowa State, do you think Tommy Crean's going to back off Marcus Teague and let him do to them what he did to Iowa State? But he is right in this sense. With UK, pick your poison. You're going to let Anthony Davis go nuts. You're going to let Terrence Jones go nuts. You've got to help out inside. You do that, you've opened up the outside of either Teague's driving or Deron Lamb, Darius Miller hitting three-pointers. If those two, that's kind of the key. If the three-pointer is falling, nothing else matters. They're winning big no matter who they're playing. Loyal's run in the NCAA tournament is like that time when you put on an old pair of blue jeans, stick your hand down in your hip pocket, and you find a fresh 20 that you'd stuffed in there because Louisville is playing right now with free money. Uh, they, no one expected them to win the Big East Tournament Championship. Nobody really expected them to be in the Sweet 16. And nobody expects them to beat Michigan State and the Cards like it that way. Uh, we always go that the other dog. Everybody, nobody thinks we're that good. Except probably our parents. So um, as long as we take care, of, take care of our business, follow the instructions, we should be fine. That doesn't really bother us. Uh, now that people know we're capable of doing, I mean, why lay down now? I mean, I'm getting close to the final four in a championship game. I mean, I don't see a point of laying down now. Yeah, just go out there and play. For Louisville, it's all about no pressure. They're the lower-seeded team, and Michigan State's the number one seed. It's actually a direct opposite of that old uh, 2009 game uh, where you know Louisville had all the pressure, and Michigan State came in and knocked them off. So Louisville's hoping that no-pressure approach will be able to lead to good results Thursday night. As you may remember, when Indiana beat Kentucky back in December, it took that Christian Walford three-pointer to knock off the Cats, which means any possession, any time in this ballgame, could be the difference between winning and losing. And Cal warns his players, Indiana's going to hustle back on defense. If Kentucky fails to hustle back, they may be coming back to Kentucky. One of the things they do a great job of is they take off their four and their five, especially their five. So they go from defense to him sprinting. If you lose track of that two or three times a half, that's six buckets, you lose the game. Why just one time, coach? It's a third time, this half, three times, this half. You must sprint back. You must be focused on all possessions. Um, you break down on a couple pick and rolls and they bang threes. Say it's two or three, just three possessions now. That's nine points. So you have seven possessions, eight possessions you break down. You cannot win the game. Absolutely right there. It, it's why the, the pace slows down so much during the NCAA tournament. Every possession is critical. The, the players know every possession is critical, so they're being extra careful. Now, the problem with that is you can't wind yourself into such a knot you can't perform. You, you, somehow you've got to stay relaxed, play your game, and understand, oh, yeah, every possession may win or lose the game. So keep that in mind while you're doing all that. Looking back through NCAA tournament history involving Rick Pitino, I was at the game in which Louisville, excuse me, in which Kentucky under Rick Pitino stopped Tim Duncan of Wake Forest. Now, why is that important? Because Louisville's role against Michigan State is to figure out a way to eliminate the game of Draymond Green. And here's how good Green is. There's only been three players in the history of the NCAA tournament to have two or more triple-double ball games. Draymond Green, Magic Johnson, and Oscar Robertson. We have to help a little bit because he's so good, you know, at just taking guys off the bounce. But that said, we need to know where the shooters are on the court at all times. You know, we've guarded the three-point line very well in the last couple of games. We've got to continue to try to do that. I mean, it's hard to compare Draymond Green to somebody because he's legitimately the best player in the country that's not Anthony Davis or Thomas Robinson. 
the one guy that kind of reminds me of uh, Blair from the couple years ago, just his rebounding and stuff, but I mean, he seems like he can, he can shoot him more. Uh, he goes up his bounce a little bit. Point forward, so uh, I haven't really played with him in T-Will, but he's got his even taller and bigger. <laughs> We talked with Michigan State coach Tom Izzo about stopping Draymond Green. It's been something that not many teams have been able to do at all. Louisville's going to try some different approaches, but really the, the number one approach that they were talking about is, is really trying to deny him the ball. If he, if he doesn't have the ball in his hands, he can't do anything very effective. But denying him the ball is going to be really, really tough, especially in Louisville's. When we come back, we'll tell you why Cal is beating up on his players a little bit as they head into this Sweet 16 matchup. And as we head to the break, how we wanted me to remind you to follow the cards through this NCAA tournament. Go to cardinalsports.com. Have you driven a Ford lately? Well, stop by Allstate Ford and test drive a new Edge or Explorer. Or visit us online at allstatetrucks.com. Allstate Ford, on the Watterson at Poplar Level Road. Buying your next VW from Bach and Volkswagen will be a great experience. No games or gimmicks, competitive prices, and a huge inventory make number one Bachman the place to get your Volkswagen. The all-new 2012 Jetta, an IHS top safety pick, is a great vehicle and fun to drive. Or get the sporty all-new 2012 Volkswagen Beetle. It's back and better than ever. Come to number one Bachman Volkswagen today to get your new Volkswagen before someone else does. Hi, I'm Kevin Renfro, owner of the Becker Law Office. For more than 25 years, my law firm has only represented injured people who need help. If you want an experienced lawyer, call or email me at the Becker Law Office. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or the website. We'll answer your questions and work hard for you. You'll owe us nothing unless we win or settle your case. Serious, experienced results. Call the Becker Law Office for a free evaluation. Just dial threes. <laughs> They'll see you before you see them. Cops are cracking down on drinking and driving. Drive sober or get pulled over. Join the club at Sam Swope Auto Group. When you service a vehicle at any Sam Swope dealership, you automatically become a Service VIP Rewards member. You get member pricing on parts and service, lost key return, and emergency roadside assistance. Plus, you can earn points that qualify you for discounts on your next vehicle purchase, up to $2,500. The best part is becoming a member is free. Become a member today at any Sam Swope dealership. Nobody walks away because everybody saves. The 2012 Bluegrass Golf Tour Card is available now. Play eight great courses for one amazing price. Call 502-964-2121 or go to shop21live.com to get yours now. Hurry, they won't last long. Get your person on the Red and Blue Review. Brought to you by Doug Dillon's Home Improvement. Cal's fixing to make sure that Kentucky is ready for this much more physical style of play that the officials are allowing to occur here in the NCAA Tournament. Be ready for a physical war. I'm, I'm watching all these games. I don't know where this, you know, physical play stuff that we were supposed to be calling went to. But, you know, I swore one team had lacrosse equipment on. I was like, where? <laughs> I mean, but so we're doing stuff physically so we can be in, in that kind of game and withstand it. Um, you know, because you don't have any control over how it's going to go. Is it going to be a rough game or not? Is it going to be called closely or not? Uh, very smart move of Calipari. One, it's going to be physical. Indiana's going to be physical, so it's smart to prepare your team. The other thing, never misses a beat, does he? This has been his uh, stumping ground all year, the physical play. That was supposed to be officiated out. They were supposed to clean up the paint and do away with a lot of that. And, of course, they have it. And any chance he gets to make a statement, I would right before I play in Indiana, right before the Final Four is looming. Why not? You've got Anthony Davis, who is very slender, who needs to be able to grab his position and hold it and not be shoved out of the way just because somebody else wants that spot. They're supposed to call it. They have it, but it doesn't hurt to put a bug in somebody's ear one more time. Yeah, and, and Darrell, I thought that uh, Anthony Davis did a nice job against Iowa State. That was a physical post battle that he had to play in that uh, third round game, and uh, I thought he held himself very nicely in that ball game. He did well. He didn't have to go head to head with Royce White, which helped matter some, but he would have shoved him all the way into the bleachers if he wanted to. <laughs> but Cal, he's smart to make that point because you're supposed to be able to hold your ground once you've set a position, and obviously that doesn't happen. And he's trying to get, hey, just call it the way you said you were going to call it, and that's not happening. But we all know it's going to be physical, and if it comes down to a final play as it did in Bloomington, there won't be a, a foul call, and there shouldn't be a foul call. It's all out war at that point. Kentucky and Indiana is a rematch of a matchup from this year. Louisville versus Michigan State is a rematch from the NCAA tournament in 2009 when Tom Izzo's team won. But, like in the Kentucky game, Louisville and Michigan State this year, very different from three years ago. I don't remember too much of it. I just remember uh, the group obviously was playing and uh, just how hard it was to score them. Just, we uh, didn't really grasp how hard it was and how tough they defended us, so scoring them was a big problem. It was very disappointing because, you know, I want to go to the Final Four, but you know, they're a good physical team. And they just 
you know, Tom is a great coach, so just got to give him credit, you know. Is anything about it, like, you know, you want to get back at him or there's a whole revenge oh, angle? Yeah, you know, but they're, you know, they're a really good team, so it's going to be a close game, a hard fight game. There's been a lot made of this 2009 game, you know, Louisville wanting to revenge factor and all that kind of thing. And sure, the players are talking about it, the older players, Kyle Kirk, Jared Swapshire, we're here for that. Uh, but I tell you, these are so different teams. It was interesting to hear Coach, Coach Izzo say that both teams, he believes, were more talented in 2009 than they are today. Uh, so it is going to be a completely different game, but I'm sure in the fans' mind, it's definitely a revenge game. And Darryl, you and I were working that game when Tom Izzo and Michigan State knocked off Kentucky and Tubby Smith in a regional final. Uh, why do you think it is that Tom Izzo doesn't necessarily always have uh, the best players, but it seems when he hits March, he has one of the best teams? Look at how March is played. It's very physical. It's very possession-oriented. The scoring comes down. That's Tom Izzo, A, B, and C. That's how he coaches. That's how he plays. So it's almost like the tournament comes to him in some regards because hmm. everything matches the way he coaches his teams, which, in the day, may be a smart way to do it. You coach entirely for how the NCAA tournament is played, and it's played right into his hands, and he just rebounds, rebounds and toughness, and that's, that will get you a long way in March. Yeah, let's talk about the matchup between Kentucky and Indiana, the rematch. It would appear to me that this is really breaking in Kentucky's favor. Uh, Kentucky is certainly a much better team than they were way back in December. Uh, Jones gave them next to nothing. Uh, Teague was ineffective. It looks to me like this really is Kentucky's game to win. We've got 30 seconds left in the show. I think you're absolutely right. I think Kentucky's going to win by a bigger margin than most people think. By a bigger margin, certainly the Calvary will ever let on. It's not a revenge game, but if you don't think something is burning inside Terrence Jones, you're out of your mind. He did not show up. He got blasted on the national stage for being a no-show after having such a good start to the year. Everybody thought he was going to be national player of the year. He's going to get some payback and prove everybody wrong. And we'll see you this weekend on our wrap-up show. The final four teams will be decided on the Red and Blue Review. The Red and Blue Review has been brought to you by PNC Bank, Allstate Ford Truck Sales, and the Muhammad Ali Center. The 2012 Bluegrass Golf Tour Card featuring Chariot Run, Bardstown Country Club at Maywood, Rosewood Country Club, Indian Springs, Cave Valley Golf Resort, the Falls Golf Resort, the Bull, and Stonecrest Golf Course is available now. Get your golf tour card and play eight great courses with cart for one low price. Call 502-964-2121 or go to shop21live.com to get yours now. You can play anytime, but you must get your golf tour card now.